I've been at Karangi for 20 years now and I, I stay, stay here because I just love it. But it's always had an environmental and sustainable focus uh, for all that time. And as, as we're developing along the track, I find that the, the Live Life Well program has really um, fitted in and probably given us more focus to expand. There'd been a lot of research and data around mental health in particular and children obesity and um, various health issues. So we really took that on board as saying, you know, we're really responsible for looking at this as a school. How can we help to change culture and thinking and really support children in the areas of mental health and physical wellbeing in particular were the main drivers. Live Life Well has been, I believe, a really successful program. They've worked with the entire community to make sure that it's part of everything that they do within the school, that everyone's been involved in it. And certainly the professional learning provided to staff has been exemplary and engaging community in activities such as kitchen, gardens and actually cooking activities. There are a lot of students who don't get that opportunity to actually cook in their own kitchen at home and to prepare a meal. And so it was really interesting when we first started the program, seeing the enthusiasm and uh, coming from students at school in preparing the meal and then sharing it with others. I like learning new dishes to cook at home. I love picking the produce from the garden. Yeah, I feel now that I can cook some things on my own because I know how to work a pan and the barbecue and cutting the knife for bear grip that Miss Kelly taught us. I find the role modelling of a child trying something, it's the other children are more likely to have a go. And, and the same with crunch and sip, that sort of thing. It's a really good role modelling to see, oh look, he's got um, carrot sticks and snow peas in his um, lunchbox for crunch and sip and that sort of thing. Every class in the school has their crunch and sip break every day. We have a big focus on the water as the chosen drink. They may have had breakfast at 7 o'clock in the morning, so we make sure they're getting that crunch and sip break in that's healthy. Um, and sustains them through the day till recess. We love it because we're loving vegetables and fruit and we like being it's, healthy. It's perfect because if there was no country sip at this school, people wouldn't be eating food. Communication with parents and families is a vital part of what we do and initially it was challenging. We include um, snippets in our weekly newsletters, children will write reports on things they are doing. Some of the challenges that are also faced are things like changing the culture of your canteen, changing the culture of lunch boxes where it's very easy to go get pre-packaged, pre-processed foods and just throw them in the kids' lunch box. We sent out a note to parents um, asking what changes they would like to see in the canteen and a lot of parents got back saying they would like to see more healthy options. We used to have things like dino nuggets and fish fingers. We have changed that now and replacing that with only healthy options. At first I thought it would be challenging getting kids to choose the healthier options, but surprisingly there has not been one complaint. If not, they're buying more and our canteen profits have almost doubled. I like the canteen much more than it was before because as well as it's more healthy, it's also more tasty. When it comes to um, implementing things like fundamental skills and PE programs and active, we are actually fortunate that we already had a culture where children were active. But what we realised we had to do was having a lot of fun, but we weren't really developing skills along the way. When Paul came back from the Live Life World Conference, um, he came back and looked at our scope and sequence and he developed a lot of um, new things. He had a good look at what sports and what, what focuses um, that we had for each term and what fundamental movement skills the children would need for those activities and he's really sort of fine-tuned our whole whole program and just made it so much more user-friendly for the staff. We're not just coming out to play um, games just for fun, we actually have a purpose that, that we can really benefit the kids by, in, by instructing them and just giving them little tips here and there which really do improve their athleticism and makes them more confident. I think being active in the morning helps us in the classroom. We've got our brains all active and ready for maths or whatever. One of the things we do to try to make students more active is we set up the Are You OK Karangi. We set it up for Live Life Well, but we also set it up for our Kids Matter because we're a Kids Matter school as well. Um, essentially, um, we train up Year 5 students at the end of the year 
and we have them um, in Year 6, they, they form our Are You OK Karengi uh, team. They organise uh, physical activities. They're not always physical, to be fair, um, but often they are, and that's all led by the, the students. We want children to be more active, but we also want those students who don't have somewhere to be at recess and lunch or someone to play with. We want them to feel welcome and, and feel um, comfortable as well. Every school within the area has benefited from um, New South Wales Health and particularly in this area it's been the Mid-North Coast Area Health. They have done an outstanding job working with our schools in liaison. The resources they've provided to our schools have been really well received and, and everyone's engaging in those programs. So to ensure that uh, a healthy lifestyle and healthy approaches are taken in a school that is essential for the principal to lead from the top. They need to make sure that they're empowering everyone, that they've provided a lot of understanding about why they're actually doing that. So a big thing has been a shift in culture within the staff in the school. It did take quite a bit of um, intensive training initially with our specialist teachers across different areas. We actually embedded it in our school plan as a part of Strategic Direction 1, which was around staff, community and student wellbeing. And a part of that and setting the milestones gave us a plan on how to develop that culture and understanding in staff. It's not as difficult as it first sounded when we first talked about bringing in all these different areas. It's just sort of, it's actually made life a lot easier in some ways because of the cross-curricular. It's not just someone driving it or one person driving it, it's the whole school becoming involved. And when you've got a whole team coming together collaboratively, making something work, that filters down in the attitudes, not just amongst the staff, but within children as well. I think the where to next is further refining the evidence that we collect and share, continuing to embed it so that it becomes a legacy in the school, that it is truly believed and understood and taken on wholeheartedly by all our staff members and community.